And it's Arsenal, Arsenal, I say. We are through to the quarterfinals. 14 years, our last knockout goal in the <laughs> Champions League. I'm even lost for words. Like, hey, 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 that game was insane. That game, like, first of all, let me just say, David Raya, good man, good man, good man, Raya. Penalty save. He almost caught the second one, caught the first and the third. Actually, the first one, Ali save, I can go. It almost went in, but luckily the gods are with us. The one thing I'll say again about the other thing I'll say about our penalties, you can tell these people train for these things. Like we actually train for set pieces, and it penalties are a very big part of that. So Bukayo was being interviewed and he was asked, Did you guys train for this? And he's like, Yeah, we've been training for this since the beginning of the season. So it's something that they're taking very seriously. Like, just preparation. Like, if there's one thing we've learned from Ateta is preparation. You have to be prepared. The other thing I'll say about Ateta, over the course of 210 minutes-ish, that's 90 minutes times 280 plus extra time, to be honest, I, in my opinion, he, he was outcoached. Tactically, Sergio Concesao, this last 90, uh, 210 minutes, whatever it is, like, just a defensive masterclass because... I talk in number one, pack the bus. I'm sorry, I'm number on Twitter. At we've packed the bus. By the way, if you don't know, uh, Twitter at Jane Deggs. Someone was trying to tell me that uh, the only thing they did was pack the bus. But we beat Sheffield six nil. We beat Burnley five. Was it five or six? Newcastle four. In between, Porto we lose one nil. Then we go and beat. Um, to be fair, Brentford was only two one. But in the course of scoring all these goals. It's not a coincidence we play 210 minutes against one team and we only score one goal. Like, it's not a coincidence. Even if you park the bus, how? Sheffield parked the bus, they considered six. To be honest, Sheffield is not Porto. Let's just agree. But it's so difficult for you to park the bus and concede two or three, <laughs> right? Like, maybe you concede two and then you try and counter and then concede a third. But the level at which Arsenal have been playing the last few weeks, for Porto to stop us like that, like that's just coaching they're just well coached well what's his name wendell the left back to me was quite impressive otavio as well center back um nico in midfield was also quite impressive i thought they were a bit big in midfield with Grich and nico and i thought we'd exploit that but he knew what he was doing like they were just the right blend of experience and speed right then the one thing we normally do a lot with teams like this is that whenever we pressure them we try to create traps like when we press them and we move them to one side of the pitch and then they sort of break that line and then they get in between our midfield and our d and our attackers on either the left or right side, that's a trap we've set. They've entered our trap. So they have to either clear the ball or, you know, we'll get the ball somehow. But the one thing you don't realize is that Porto has Brazilians. They thrive. They thrive in small spaces. Like when you, that claustrophobia is what they want to work with, you know. And they were so good at it. And I was, I was... I was genuinely, like, just from a tactical perspective, I enjoyed watching these two teams um, go at it tactically and see who's going to blink first. Even at some point, um, and I tweeted about it, even before, because um, uh, I thought the only thing that, the only way we would stretch them is if you brought, okay, we didn't have Martinelli, so Trost had started on the left wing. Having someone to stretch them on either wing, Martinelli and Saka, was always going to be our game plan. By Martinelli missing this game, we have Trossard. Yes, he brings something different. Yes, he scored the goal. But there's the threat of speed that now you don't have, right? Someone who's just a good dribbler attacking you. And I believed Jesus was the, the clear person to bring on, right? Um, the thing is, you have to think as a manager. Jesus has been out for how long, right? Party has been out for how long? I'm not going to bring them in the 68th minute. Then we go to extra time, which means they land up playing 50 minutes, yet... No, you've, they played 30 plus 30. Another, I played an hour and your medical team is telling you, no, we have a cap on them. We can only play uh, a certain number of minutes with them. We can only play 30 minutes with them because they're coming back from bad injuries. So we had to, Ateta literally had to weigh. Is it, is it worth the risk bringing him now? We go for it within the 90. Because we go to extra time, now you're risking injury. And I think... He played it well. He just held it to as long as he could. You know, um, it was it was just good timing. Even uh, Concesao, Concesao did not make any changes, and he was like, "I'm not going to blink fast." You know, um, 
such a tactical masterpiece. Like I just enjoyed. Like these are the games that make me happy. Even though I was nervous as hell, I thought I was, I was going to do a live. But to be honest, guys, I was just nervous. But from quarters, I'm not failing. I'm doing live on TikTok, on YouTube, everywhere. Yeah, I was just nervous. Technical difficulties, so I just talked myself out of it. But yeah, I don't know how these guys do it. But yeah, I'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. Um, Trossard's goal again. Uh, Odegaard leading from the front. The boy is just. He's just a natural. Like he just stepped up. He was just he's not afraid to get the ball in 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 places where other players might not want to are not comfortable with. Um he's just always creating chances. It's interesting actually the goal that this he this goal that he created he came from the left side, which is where Rice would be. Um they were just quite smart with how they were moving the move the movement up front. When Jesus came on, you could see that Porto needed a like a mean like a, maybe a like a Three, four, five minutes to kind of adjust because now you've brought someone who has space on the on the wing. You're stretching them a bit more. I believe it 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 was it was a good it was a good tactical uh, tweak that Ateta made. But also it was going into the 90th minute, so no one really wants to make a mistake. And going into extra time, you don't want to be the one to concede, you know, <laughs> and make the mistake. And that has happened to us in the Europa League and the Champions League. Actually, Europa League over the past three years, I think, where we've conceded like. Two minutes of extra time left and like a few minutes to 90, right? Even sporting, that's how sporting knocked us out last year. So there's just moments at which I feel like this team really grew up. Um, it was a big learning curve. It was them actually being put... I won't even lie to you, we looked nervous. We looked very nervous. And you can tell that that thing of not making it to the quarterfinals is something that was weighing down on... I don't say weighing down, but it's something that was they were really thinking about and they didn't want to be the team that doesn't um, qualify again. Which, for some reason now, you know, you they even have less pressure now going into the quarterfinals. And whoever they meet in the quarters is going to be a team that wants to attack. There is no team that's going to be in the quarterfinals that doesn't want to attack. So, it's only going to get, it's going to get harder, yes, because you're playing big teams and mentally you don't want to be the person to make the mistake back. But it's going to be a bit easier in the sense of you don't have the weight of history against you, working against you. So, yeah, again, I'm very impressed by Sergio Concesao. Like that, to me, in, from a coaching perspective, um, it's been a while since I've seen Arteta get outcoached um, like that. I think the last time maybe that happened was um, FA Cup, Klopp, Klopp versus him. Yeah, Klopp did a, have a first one, we pulled a first one on him. Um, the West Ham loss, the Fulham loss, those were just like, we were just missing chances. We were not, create, we were not con converting chances. Klopp in the FA Cup, that, that, that was another time where you could feel like, okay, Ateta here, you could have done better, you know. But the one thing I, I've seen from Ateta is that when this guy makes a mistake, he learns from it quickly. Does not repeat mistakes. He makes things actually work and things move, right? So, yeah. Um, round of 16, we are done. Finally qualified to the quarterfinals of uh, the Champions League. It has been a while. For you fellow Arsenal fans, you need to celebrate this. Do not fight with, don't fight with United fans, don't fight with Chelsea fans. Celebrate your team. This team is going places. Enjoy, enjoy the moment. Uh, the hit watchers who are live on Twitter. Saddam, hey, Eric, Lotan, live, live. They, I know they're waiting and I know they're waiting for the next one. It's always good. It's always good to know that uh, we're keeping everyone else awake. Um, yeah, so I was going to check. So the draw for the Champions League quarterfinal is on Friday. Barcelona are through, of course. They beat um, Napoli 3-1 yesterday to win 4-2 on aggregate. Then um, BVB are play today. Atleti and Inter play today. Um, I think Borussia play PSV, if I'm not wrong. And then um, who else has qualified? Obviously, Man City has qualified. Barca, PSG, Bayern. So, who would I want in the quarters? I, I at this point, I don't. I don't really care. For the round of sixteen, I, we, I, I, I thought we needed a, a smaller team just to get over that mental hurdle. From here, moving on. To be honest, as an Arsenal fan, if someone asks me, "Are you guys going to? Are you guys going to finish trophyless?" I'm saying no. I want us to go for the double. I want us to go for the double. Because if you don't believe now, if you don't start dreaming now, when is it going to be, right? Or when are you going to start dreaming? Um, yeah, so I'm definitely, definitely going for, 
for um I like I don't I don't care. Bring anyone. <laughs> Bring anyone. Uh there's a team like Real Madrid has never beaten Arsenal, so they also have the weight of history on their shoulders. But if there's any team that defies history, it's Real. Um Bayern, I still believe like if Bayern come and play um Arsenal, I mean Kane will be very fired up for that one. But that's one of those demons that I feel like we really need to vanquish. And I would and honestly, if you get Bayern, I'd rather not get Bayern. But if you get Bayern, I'd, I'd it's an opportunity. It's an opportunity to just uh, vanquish demons. Uh, who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? Uh, I think PSG is a very tricky pop, pop, um, team. Like PSG is the one team which I I don't even know how we're going to handle them. Um, and I feel like ever since they lost Verratti, I always thought that ah the, the team is done. But this kid Vitinha in midfield is actually a baller. So yeah. Anyway, yeah, so Arsenal, 2-0, have beaten Porto, are through to the quarterfinals of the Champions League. Tonight will probably be, no, no, not tonight. We'll do a live on um, Friday when they're doing the um, uh, the draw. And yeah, we'll be live on TikTok and YouTube. And see you then. Peace.